Okay, we're going to start with a default cube. Delete it. Add in another default cube, of course, because that's what we do. This is Blender. Scale things to look like a book. Remove the three faces so you have just the book cover. We're going to bevel the corners. This will allow us to deform it with an armature later on. You should also give another bevel with three subdivisions to the corners of that other bevel. This will allow us to deform it correctly. Subdivide the spine. Grab the middle edge. With proportional editing turned on, grab it and move it down slightly to give it a nice curve. Shade it smooth. Turn on auto smooth. Wow! Give it a solidify modifier. Make sure to check even thickness. When you're happy, apply the solidify. Everything's looking good, time to rig. Add a bone, set it to stick and in front. Grab the stick and move it to the centre of the back page of the book. Align the ends of the bone evenly with the book cover. Position the second end of the bone at the start of the bevel we made. Then extrude this bone out and move it into position on the next corner of where we bevelled. Adjust the vertices to be in the middle of the geometry. Extrude up halfway for the spine and then again. And then repeat the same process for the front of the cover. Now it's just a case of moving that last vertice back. Before we parent the book to the armature, we want to name the bones. This is completely up to you. So now the bones have been named, we can select the book and then select the armature, press Ctrl P and parent with empty groups. As you see, we now have the bone groups applied as vertex groups to the book. And now it's just a case of selecting the geometry we want parented to each bone and then assigning it to the correct vertex group. It's important to note that you should take at least one of the bevels with the front cover. This will just help with deformation. Continue the process for each of the bones. So now the armature deforms the book, but we want to take it one step further. We want to be able to only animate one bone and have the rest of the bones follow. So for this we're going to use a copy rotation constraint. So select the front cover, add the copy rotation constraint, select the target as the armature, and the bone will be the next bone in the chain, which will be front bend. Make sure you change it to local space for both tangent and outer. So now when we rotate the bend bone, you see that the cover bone follows. Repeat this process for the bend bone, apply it to the top spine bone. And now our armature opens the book realistically. Next we're going to create the paper on the inside of the book covers. To do this, simply inset the faces and extrude them slightly. And now we'll bevel the last hard corners left on the book. Three or four subdivisions should be more than enough. Five is maximum. And lastly we'll bevel the rim. These bevels don't need to be high resolution, the auto smooth will help it. Grab the inside of the spine, duplicate it and part it from selection. This will still be parented to the armature and will still deform. Extrude it slightly and this will act as the glue at the back of the book. Bevel each end to get rid of those hard edges. Okay, and now we're going to texture the book. For UVs, you can just cube project. For the cover, I used this red leather texture I got from texturehaven.com. Hook up the texture as normal and be sure to set everything except for the color to non-linear data. Now we have nice roughness and a nice leather cover for our book. If you only have a normal map with your texture, you can take the color and plug it into a bump. If you take the normal map and use it for the normal of the bump, this will work really nice. Okay, I now want more surface imperfections on my book. I'm going to use this scratch texture from textures.com to add some specular imperfections. This is not overly noticeable, but it does add some realism. Next, take the spine, put a loop cut in the middle, and then one at either end. Then add two more loop cuts on each side and bevel all the middle loop cuts. Now take these larger parts of the spine and extrude them out. It doesn't matter how far you go. Using edge select, we want to select all the edges, and again, we're going to bevel these. Once you've beveled them, push them back to the spine. And now we have some nice leather-bound geometry. It's a good idea to now reproject our UVs. And because I've used cube projection, I can easily do this again with no problems. Play with the roughness and specular values until you're happy with them. We want to give the book some painted gold on it. If you select the extruded faces of the spine and assign them to a new material, and then give it the same book material, and then check the number 2 beside the name. We've now created a new instance of that material that we can change. And because it's the same material and using the same UVs, we can easily play and change things on the spine without causing any problems to the rest of the book. Inside the texture, duplicate the principled BSDF. I'm going to use this interlaced ornaments texture as a mask between these two materials. So first bring the texture in, connect it to the principled BSDF and plug that into the surface output. Grab the faces of the extruded parts of the spine, press U to unwrap and just unwrap them. We now want to select all of the individual faces and overlay them on top of each other. 
Once you've done this, use vertex select mode. Select all the vertices in the top, press S, Y and 0. This will align all of these vertexes together. Then repeat this for the other vertices, using S, X, 0 for the vertical ones. Now we open the texture. And now it's just a case of lining it up on the texture with the ornament we want to be displayed. Now that we've lined up the UVs, we can remove the texture from the principal BSDF. Add a mix shader and plug the leather into the second output. On the first principal BSDF we want to make a gold texture, but we also want to keep the roughness and the bump from the leather texture, so add them into this too. We can now use the ornaments texture as a mask between these two textures. We can add a colour ramp to better refine this effect. Repeat this process to add more detail to the other parts of the spine, or the book as a whole. I ended up adding more to the spine and this pattern to the front cover. Now I'm going to pose the book open. For the paper on the inside of the cover, I'm going to select the geometry, create a new texture and call it paper. I'll then bring in a paper texture and line up the UVs correctly. If you're using an image texture, plug the colour into the roughness and add a colour ramp and bring the black value to more of a grey. Add the colour to a bump node and reduce the strength. This will bring out some of the imperfections of the paper. And now we'll add a texture to the spine. I used this texture from textures.com of a book that had the spine exposed. Add bump and roughness and we're ready to go. So now we've finished the book cover and we're going to make the pages. For the pages, I simply used a bezier curve with an extrusion, a solidify and I arrayed them to get these chunks. Using curves makes it very easy to create variation in pages. Once I've blocked out the main pages, I then went back and duplicated them. I removed the array and scaled them randomly, placing them throughout the pages to give some rough variation. Now things look like they're starting to come together. Don't worry too much about the paper that's sticking through the spine, we'll delete that when we convert it to geometry. We want to add a new texture, we want to add the paper texture from earlier to this. Add a second gold texture to the pages, we'll use this for the rim. In the solidify options, under materials, change rim to use the second slot, and now you can see the edges of the pages are gold. When you're happy with the texturing, select all of the paper again, right click and convert to mesh. With the book cover in view, tab into edit mode and select all of the vertices that are outside of the spine. You can delete them. Enable shade smooth for the pages and we're done. If you want to make a flat book, just use a plane instead of a curve, but do the same things with the solidify and the materials. If you array the pages, apply the array and part by loose, you can now use Randomize Transform to give randomization to your pages. Simply join them back together at the end and you're all done. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video.